Welcome, everybody. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello, oh, hello. Paula, don't you look so cute? Oh, we love it. That's really pretty color. Yeah, and these are your earrings too. Some earrings oh. like before. Oh yes. Oh, the colorful or? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so great. So pretty. Thank you. Ooh. I, I didn't get your package yet. I know. It's, I tracked <laughs> it this morning. I was very upset. <laughs> I overnighted it, but uh, well, next UPS time. hates me. Yeah. <laughs> It'll come Monday. <laughs> Hi, Rick. Even with Saturday, I don't know. Lori. Hi, Angela. <laughs> I wish, Lori, you were at the shop because I have all three of your samples ready. <laughs> so you are um, with your video off. Um, so if you, if you look down at the bottom of your screen, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can um, click on the video icon and turn your video on if you feel comfortable. We do love seeing your faces. It's definitely not a requirement, but it's awfully fun for us to be able to see you. So if you feel comfortable, go ahead and turn that on. And mostly I do think everyone comes in muted. So if you wanted to turn your mute off for a little chat right now, you're welcome to do that. Um, also while we're letting, you know, filtering in, let me just tell you a couple tech, um, mainly that is if anything were to happen where we need Zoom and open a new one. Um, we will post a new link on the website. So that is artpartycenter.org. So O-R-G, not com. And yes, thank you for doing that, you guys. It looks like people are posting in the chat where they're from. We'd love to see where you're from. Chat is a little button also on the bottom of your screen, probably, if you're on a computer. Um, and we would love for everyone to open up their chat. Um, that is the best way for you guys to communicate with us, especially once the presentations start. So if you have any questions, you wanna make how super awesome something is that you're looking at, you can just uh, do that right in the chat. So yeah, we still have people coming in. So. Anyway, I guess we'll let this one more come in. You know, um, I hope everyone, I'm looking at where people are from. Hopefully people are seeing some of the same sunshine um, yeah. now that we're in April. Yay! It's so great. It's like, it's sort of um, this April in some ways really does feel like a new day. <laughs> new hope is coming. Um, so welcome to um, our Saturday art parties with Art Party Central. Um, and we always love to start our art parties with a little bit of a cheers, I think especially on a Saturday. So if you have a glass of water, a coffee, any sort of cup handy, we'd love to cheers you or you can also just pretend. And let's check out Danielle's cutie little mug there from Z Pots and, and welcome. Cheers. 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 I love Hi. everybody's art mugs. <laughs> oh, thank you for wearing your ecologic, Liz. <laughs> this is my, this was, this was my perfect, oh, there she is. This is my perfect dining out um, for lunch outfit today in the in the city. So and I had my little my MPR oh, oh hey. Oh yeah. Isn't that the coolest? Thing? It is so cool. And it's, it carries my phone and a couple credit cards and I'm set. Oh awesome. my gosh, and those colors are so great. Did Kathleen help you pick them out or do you just oh, know your oh, colors? Yeah. yeah, well, I picked out the sweater myself, but then I had a consult and I got a coordinating mitts and hat, but today was not, <laughs> not cold enough for the mitts. So it was just gotcha. the, the hat and the sweater today. Oh, like wonderful. Perfect, perfect dining out, out for dining out and taking my jacket off and just enjoying the sunshine. Wonderful. Oh, that is great. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for coming. We are going to get uh, started. Um, so we are going to, at this point, mute everyone. Please don't be offended. It's just Zoom protocol. Okay, there we go. Thank you. So hello, everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am 
and I will be your host today for this party. I'm so excited. This is our second party today. So I've actually had the privilege of seeing all these great artists. So I get to be extra excited because I know what's in store. Um, and I actually am of Swan and Stone Millinery. My partner and I, my partner is Nora Swan and she and I make um, all these awesome hats, mostly wool felt hats up here in Vermont. Um, and we also have, of course, a spring line that we're actually kind of rolling out right now of uh, waterproof, sunproof garden and streetwear hats. Um, and today I am super lucky to be joined by the awesome Charlie Tiznakis of Ecologic. You may or may not have seen him before um, with Kathleen um, as my co-host. So he will be running all the behind the scenes stuff, spotlighting people and keeping things running smoothly. So yay, Charlie, for co-hosting today. So you can find um, our hats at swanandstone.com. You can find, uh, well, Charlie's wife's uh, clothing at ecologic.com. And you're going to hear all about that in a little bit. So don't worry. <laughs> um, so tonight, or today, it's still sunny. This late afternoon, um, we are joined by six super talented artists. Um, and first, we're going to be hearing from MPR of Megan Patrice. Next, Christine Evans, Danielle Merzada from Merzada, Angela Flaviani from Bottega Flaviani, Ariel from Ariel Bracket Jewelry, and then finally, Kathleen Tiznakis from Ecologic. So let me tell you how these parties are run, although I see lots of familiar names, you have a sense of it already, but we are going to um, hear from each artist. Each artist has a chance to give um, a presentation and then um, we will follow that with one or two questions um, that have been previously submitted. And at the end of the party, we'll raffle off one $50 gift to the artist's website. So that's six different chances to win for being here today but you do need to stick around till the end of the party to win. So we will, we hope to see you till the end. Um, and then we'll also give everyone a special discount code at the end of the party, um, which will be good for all of the artists' websites as well as my own um, and of course Ecologic. Um, and uh, then after that, we will open up the party for what we call the after party. And that's some chatting. Uh, you have a chance to unmute yourself, ask some questions, see some more pieces, that sort of thing. So let's get to the fun stuff. Um, our first artist today is Kathleen Tiznakis. Kathleen? Oh, sorry. That was in my script, but that is wrong. Our first artist is Megan. I was like, wait a second, but I put the necklace on for Megan. Um, <laughs> Don't, don't listen to that. Our first artist is Megan Patrice Riley. Megan, take it away. Awesome. Um, thank you, Sam. Uh, thanks everyone for being here too. Happy Saturday. And it's wonderful to be able to share this with you and um, share a little bit of some of the new work that I've been uh, creating in the studio. I am NPR, Megan Patrice Riley, and welcome to Brooklyn, New York. We're in my like very, very beloved studio. Uh, and I brought some special work for this week, especially. I just, I was, I've kind of been bringing you on this journey in Art Party Central of, of I make different types of work. I'm, I'm a contemporary art jeweler. What, what that means is I use kind of maybe more unique contemporary materials and then blend them with more traditional uh, jewelry techniques or uh, metal smithing techniques. So I usually am using steel cable with different like gemstones. For example, this is one of the new ones. That, uh, I'm really excited about and love is the rainbow pearls. I just got some new new pearls in and we just put up together some really, really beautiful like painterly palettes. Uh, and then I'm using the steel cable that's this really almost textile like metal that I, I fabricate with, with these little sterling silver bits. And, and, and I'm creating lots and lots of chains. It has a really delicate, fine, uh, look, it's really easy to pop on these long magnets. I'm thinking about things that you can wear with a t-shirt. But then for me to understand and for me to educate or uh, explain to people how I fabricate and what I'm doing in this little kind of miniaturized form, I started working with this bigger cable. And that cable looks like this. It's a woven cable. 
This is exactly the same as what's happening in that really the beautiful pearl piece, but this is like 10 times the width. And it's a steel cable that's braided also on the inside and has that flexibility and strength. So I end up weaving with it and fabricating with it. And a lot of times I feel like I'm drawing and also using textiles and almost like crocheting, but with my own fabrication technique that I developed. This is, what I'm doing is primarily adapting a lot of engin ooh, engineering pieces. Oh no. This is also my beautiful fascinator from Swan and Stone. So I'm using a lot of um, this simple cable and then these little ferrules that are tubes that I smush together and hold the cable in, in place, almost like a rivet, but it's holding two pieces together. And then I set pearls in there. So this is actually two necklaces. This is one of my newer pieces. This is in the Maxi Cable Collection. This is um, on the front page of the website, but it, it's, it's really like an art to wear, uh, almost transitions into clothing or fabric. I am wearing one of the clothing pieces, but this, even this necklace does that as well. So this is with freshwater pearls that are floating on there. These are a, a black one and a steel one. It's five interlocking rings, like a Mobius strip, uh, or like the Cartier uh, Eternity Band, the three interlocking rings that are it's very a very classic motif. So you'll have a stack that always works together. But what else, what, what I really, really, what I found after wearing this a lot, because it is so simple, it, it can do a lot more. It can be opened up and worn uh, as a little vest. Let's see if I can do it right now. It can be with the, the rings hanging down. This part can become an epaulette over here. Uh, it, 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 it's a it's a simple piece, but it becomes almost like an educational toy where it, I encourage you to play with it and think about it in different ways. Uh, and that has really been fun because that then leads to me making pieces that are, this helps me informs my design process within the more fine pieces as well. So this is one of the, you can see the relation of that, those little um, connection points, but this is all done with the 14 karat gold fill. This has that same property where it folds on itself. It can be worn different ways. And this can flip in here and go different places. Kind of choose your own adventure jewelry a little bit. Am I missing questions, Sam? I'm, I'm missing, the, I'm, I'm watching the chat, but not paying attention that well. No, you, you, you know, I haven't really found that you ever really miss anything. I was just saying, though, that I always love, <laughs> I always love what a total like STEM math geek you are and how that comes out in like your conversation about your work. I'm just, I, I get so caught up in, you know, how you do these lo logarithms to figure out how a piece is going to turn out. It's just so fantastic. It, um. <laughs> it, it really, thank you, because I think that that really helps with the design, to, that it looks so simple, but then the reality right. is it has a lot more going on. So exactly. this can do this and become a little vest. So yes. Yeah, Keep I mean, going. in order to think in 3D in your brain, you need to sort of, you're mapping it all out. So, um, but one thing that did come in is there, can you tell us, is there any sort of special care with your work? Um, in particular, cleaning. How, how do you take care of it with all those actually, parts? It is that's a great because it is made up of a bunch of different things. The stainless steel cable itself is what is this this part right here, and it's the gold part. It's the silver part within the smaller cable pieces. That's actually braided on the inside and then coated with a nylon over it, so it protects it from the from humidity or the air or oils from your skin, so you don't have to actually polish it. And it and the silver inside of it that's it stays silver because it never touches air as well or oils. The little connection points I was talking about in the larger cable, what's great is that these are all aluminum. Mm. So you never have to care for them. They just, they're, you don't need to polish those little parts. The ear hooks here, as well as the little parts here, all the little mini connections in the fine work in sterling are actually done in argentium silver. So that means they're much, much more, much less, more resilient to being, to tarnishing 
than regular sterling silver. So you don't need to polish those. So we really try to think about that. The gold fill in the gold pieces is not plated. So it's not gonna come off. It's um, like chemically bonded over the, the base metal. So it stays that way. You don't need to polish it or worry about it. I have pieces for 10 years and we're pretty, um, I'm, I'm pretty tough on things like the earrings mm -hmm. definitely go through like nap testing as well as maybe a shower or have been worn for months at a time. So yeah. Yeah. It's well, I can attest to that. I actually have, I have all my, my NPR on right now. And, you know, as we all know, I have multiple children <laughs> and, and run a farm. So um, my, my jewelry is held up to it. Thank you. But the other thing you were just mentioning those aluminum connections, does that also help with how lightweight, I mean, your jewelry is incredibly lightweight. Yes. And these newer pieces have this wonderful weight and look mm. to them because they are 10 times the scale of that right. spine cable. But they, because of the connections being aluminum, I sourced that in particular, not steel or silver, right. because it kept the lightness. The pearls themselves, I don't use very heavy stones. Pearls are incredibly light, and I get them almost specially hollow mm -hmm. form. They're a little bit, a little bit more hollow inside to work with the cable, so they're even lighter as well. Right, that's incredible. Well, thanks so much, Megan. Thank I always you. love seeing what you have that's coming out with all these new things. Um, so we're gonna head over to Christine Evans. Thanks, Megan. Hi, thank you so much. I love that jewelry, Megan. It's just so beautiful. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here today in April, so close to Easter. And I uh, just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I am a figure sculpture, sculptor from the Southwest. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I create ceramic figures out of uh, clay and, get, and fire them. And I usually focus on the female form because I love to celebrate the inherent beauty and power of the feminine spirit with my work. So um, I also really love to bring in elements from nature, things like leaves or flowers or um, pieces of coral, um, stones. I bring those into my studio and I use them as a guide and I make the same thing or something similar out of clay and then attach those elements to my pieces. And the point with that is to really reference how we are all connected with nature and how it can really inspire and inform us in our lives. This piece here is a good example of that. It's titled Age of Wisdom. And I created this piece when I was on a six month artist residency in North Carolina recently. I um, was there from about May until October and not during the pandemic, thank goodness. So that was good, but um, I worked there. I taught, I taught classes and I had a studio and my studio faced out on these beautiful oak trees right outside the window. And coming from the Southwest with the real arid climate and the type of landscape we have here, it was just a real nice change to be in a, in a state um, on the Eastern area, in the Eastern area of the US that uh, has, is such, so lush and green and verdant. And so I brought those leaves and acorns into my studio and added them to this bust um, and, you know, had a lot of fun doing that. So it also, this bust also references antiquity. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if you can tell, but the face is similar to um, Greek and Roman classical sculptures. You can sort of see a little bit of that nose right here. And I used that as an, as an inspiration for the features on this piece. I wanted to talk about the wisdom of the ages through nature, through the plant life, but also through um, the art that endures, the art that teaches us something, you know, hundreds of years later, thousands of years later. So that's what this piece is about. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a, a close up with the camera. So you can see a little better. Here we go. So here's her, her face. I use lots of different colors of oxides and stains and underglazes to create sort of a, a mottled surface that gives an overall tone, but up close creates a really beautiful texture. And you can also see here uh, the greens that go into these leaves, for instance, and the browns and the rich terracotta reds that go into her hair. And here's the little acorns in the back. And I'm just gonna kind of scan down to the base here. The base, it's sitting on a wooden base. 
This is a walnut wood base created by my husband, who is also an art party presenter. It's Griffith Evans. And so usually most of my busts and sculptures are resting on some kind of wooden base to help them be very stable and elevated. So there, there she is. Now I'd like to take us down to the other end of the table and show you some new work that I've been working on. Um, lately I've been really working and thinking about masks and how masks can be expressive and they can express feelings and emotions and even concepts that are kind of uni unique and interesting. I use the term mask lightly because what these really are are like three-dimensional portraits of states of being or um, ideas. Like for instance, this is to celebrate cultures around the world, Asian features. This is sort of my Persian slash Moroccan piece right here. Um, and so I, I'm celebrating the connection with the art from those areas, the flowers and uh, gorgeous nature from those areas. I'm also celebrating water with these two pieces. These represent waves or rippling water from lakes or streams right here and here. And um, I had a lot of fun with um, creating different scale, different sizes. So we have a really small piece here, and this is almost like scale here. And I thought about how these can be parts of people's collections, or you can use these to form vignettes um, on your tabletop, uh, mantle place, mantle pieces. So I thought about what goes well with these, or what do these go well with, or what can they enhance, what can enhance them? And I was thinking about flowers, potted plants. And here in the Southwest, we have quite a few fossils. So here's a fossilized shell, which can look, I think, really nice thanks to a small piece and also looks really beautiful next to a larger piece like so. So this is, these pieces are really meant to um, add personality, liveliness, and interest to collections of treasures that one might have in their home. So let's go ahead and get a real quick close-up of these as well. And you can see their faces a little better. This one has some gold leaf all around the face right here and also up here. There's that little face. And then this one here, I just kind of want to show you from the side a little bit so you can see the dimensionality of the piece. The face really projects forward into space, just like a real face does. So it has this sort of like 2D, 3D quality. Um, it's a little bit flat at the back, but also then it has this three-dimensional quality in the face itself. And I just love this little tiny one, which is like the size of my palm. Um, I love the expression on this one, very peaceful, relaxed and quiet. Christine, I don't wanna stop you from showing those. I just wanted to ask a question that came in of, um, can those tiles actually be hung on the wall or do they need to stay, do they stay on the table? Actually, they are very versatile in that they can be hung on the wall. I have, I'll, I'll pull this one off to show you. You just, you can slide it right off the stand. And here's the hole that you use to thread onto the metal stand. Mm -hmm. And then this is the keyhole right here that can be used to uh, hang it on the wall. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that here. Um, this is something I thought about when I was constructing these. I thought, wouldn't it be nice if these can be displayed in more than one way? And they can also be displayed outdoors um, on garden fences or against walls. It's good in really harsh cold weather to bring them indoors or to have them under some sort of shelter. But yeah, they have a lot of versatility built into them. So I think about those things when I'm creating artwork for the homes. Right. Could I just could I display something like that outside, even like in climates like in Vermont or because it's clay, I imagine I would want to bring it indoors in the winter. Just bring it indoors in the winter. Otherwise, really, it's it's this has been this is high temperature clay, so uh -huh. it's been fired pretty. Uh, it's it's able to handle more extreme weather than lower like earthenware or that type oh. of could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's so that's amazing. They're they're so beautiful. I would be so afraid to put them outside, but I would trust you. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Christine. We really appreciate yes. it. And we do have a couple of questions for you. So um, in the after party, so I hope everyone sticks around. Okay, thank thanks. you. Um, so we're gonna head over to Danielle. 
Hi, Danielle. Hi there. Um, I just changed my view, I think, to be less blown out. Can you just manage that with me if I am, um, if I go white? You, um, you look fine now. Okay, great. Uh, my name is Danielle Marzada. <laughs> my husband and I have a small jewelry business in Marstown, New Jersey, and we have a, a little um, art shop as well, a little gallery. We begin our line by taking different organic materials and cutting them up and carving them and then casting them into shapes that we end up using for all of, all of our jewelry. This is an example of a cedar branch. And it was obviously so compelling, um, those patterns, very much like the sculptures we were just looking at, right? How can we move that onto the body, carve that in ceramic, or maybe make it in metal? And so this is an example of a chain that we made um, with that same branch by taking a small element here and then repeating it over and over. So inside this chain, every piece is a three-part hinge. And it looks like that on. Because the work is cast, meaning we're taking a carving of an organic thing and then making a mold of a piece or, or um, able to copy a texture and then build it into something else, we're able to work in the multiple, which means that this unit here makes a great earring or a part of a branch through a ring or put a lot of them together to build this collar necklace. Most of the work we build starts with an organic form like a pine cone or sea fan coral or something from one of my like many, many, many trays of natural things. A lot of the store in our studio looks like this. Um, but I also love that lace. I, I'm sorry, I think, did you? Oh, you muted yourself. Okay. Since I was having technical problems myself, I thought maybe you just got quiet. No, thank you so much. So, so, so much. Um, one of the things they don't show as often are belt buckles, but I brought some today. This is a pretty cool pod and it just seemed, seemed like it should sit on the body. So we cast a piece of that into sterling. So this is oxidized sterling and it looks super great right there. That same lace concept in a little piece can be a great little earring like this. But in a big piece, sits there really well. This is a sterling silver lace belt buckle. When you're shopping on our website, you'll see that most pieces come in three finishes. Sterling silver, oxidized sterling silver, or a two-tone bronze, which is kind of like a golden tone color. This is another belt buckle I'm pretty excited to show because it's actually on a belt and you can order your belt separately. But this one is made with the stem of a peony flower cast in sterling, some pretty cool grass we found on the west coast, and this fern. I love this piece because it combines different organic forms rather than a single texture. Usually in my work, you'll find like, this is made from the bark of a palm tree. This is made from morel mushrooms or something like that. But this one I think is cool in its combinations. When we start to move into scale like this, a belt buckle is a great place to put it. Another cool place might be the top of the body. You can imagine that same piece as a pendant. And I've got a, a lover on this call of big cuff bracelets. And so I'm gonna show you a couple of those. This one is made with morel mushrooms. And so it's lots of different mushroom castings all put together to build this pattern. This is oxidized sterling. This piece is made with sea fan coral. This is our, maybe my most classic cuff. It's called the sea fan cuff. And it has this really cool overlap. So this is made with little pieces about like that. Um, into a master. And then we've taken a mold of these longer pieces and built them together. It looks like this on. And here's a third one. This one is made with the bark of a palm tree. Also cast in sterling silver. So this one slips on like that. And it looks like this on. I feel like this whole COVID year has been a really great time for a Wonder Woman cuff. 
So we got really into making larger statement cuffs, even though a lot of what you're doing is like being more at home or sitting on a computer. Maybe it doesn't think like, oh, a great place for a heavy bracelet. But I also, I feel like there's sort of a counter to all of the, the norm is like, well, what becomes then the special? So maybe that going out earring is actually great on Zoom, but you know, how do you know that you're not in the digital universe? And it's because, and one way is these like cool, heavier objects um, that are really like for you in the world. This is another one. This is a medium weight peony cup. And I'm not sure if the color will come through, but can you see how this is sort of golden tone? Yeah, so, we can. So this is an example of that third color. So this is sterling. The bracelets I showed you were all oxidized sterling. And this is black rhodium plated bronze. So it's this cool two-tone bronze. Uh, the third metal we work in is solid gold. These are 18 karat solid gold. And maybe even from here, you can see this gives you a warm tone without the solid gold price. So if you're filtering through our site or any, any jeweler's site, and you, as soon as you move into solid gold, it's like, oh, oh, okay, wow, you know, the price really, really jumps. But the bronze is actually makes the price lower and gives you some of the cool, uh, not cool, but like the, the warmness of, of maybe you wear a lot of gold, but the bronze goes with the gold in a really cool way. This Danielle. Is Yes. Sorry, someone did ask you about the earrings you're wearing. So could you just move oh, forward yeah, a little bit and show us? Thanks. This is a mica strawberry earring. So this is green mica on the bottom and 18 karat gold on top. I have a tear in both ear lobes. So it's actually not a heavy earring. It's just that it looks heavy on me. It's probably some cosmetic surgery I should get done based on the profession I chose. The reason we call this earring the strawberry earring is because of the construction in the back. Oh, wow. This top piece is a casting of a sweet gum fruit. I'm not sure I have one within arm's reach, um, but it's a, like kind of a seed that we slice up like a tomato. And then I'll just kind of like pull the curtain back for you. Each one of these wires is drilled through. So there's a tiny hole. And the way that this is connected to that is actually a piece of monofilament that's rolling through the mica, through the gold. And then with a lighter, we light and meld up ball up one end of the monofilament and then ball up the other. Mica is heat isn't heat sensitive, so it can handle the, the torch work there, but it's not really torch work. It's actually with a lighter. It feels kind of plebeian, but it's a very cool concept and a kind of cool piece. Uh, another section of our site that I'm building out now is called Milestones. And this is an example of another take on a almost mica-like feeling, but these are huge diamond slices. So this texture, this linear stripe, same in the ring I'm wearing, these rings that I'm wearing are threads from the inside of a pine cone. So every pine cone has like these, those fronds we are all really familiar with. If you break them open, there's actually a, a, a thread pattern inside it. It's probably risky for me to show you. <laughs> so I, I hate to do this, but you only have a few seconds left and I didn't know if you wanted to show a couple more from that collection or no. Just oh, the linear you know. collection? Uh, I don't, don't think I have them in front of me. It's okay. 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 Yeah. I just just wanted to give you the warning so that You're I didn't so cut you no, off. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, it is, but we, we will need to um, get to it in the after party. And I have noted that. So we'll get we'll get to that when we, when we uh, go into the after party. So thank you so much, Danielle. That was wonderful. Thank you. Bye. Um, and now we're going to go over to Angela. Hi everybody. Here I am. Hi everybody. I'm Angela Flaviani from Bottega Flaviani in San Francisco. So welcome to the art party show. I see there are a couple of uh, returning clients of mine and so it's so nice to see all of you and thank you all for your support over the last few months. Um, today what I wanted to show you was some of the newer pieces, uh, some of the new leathers and colorways that I have. One bag that has been very popular here on Art Party is the Tara here on the top shelf. But she was actually born because of another bag that I did um, that I haven't had and I haven't made in a while. So this week I quickly tried to make a couple because I've had a lot of inquiries about it. And that bag is one. One is made just like it's named out of one single piece of leather. This was the first of the origami pieces. The whole body is one piece of leather folded together and stitched together. And in the leather world, whether you're talking a bag or a garment, a jacket, when 
you make a bag or any piece out of one solid piece of leather, that is the height of luxury. Because what that means is the leather has to be perfect all the way around. And that's why when you find a leather bag that has big pieces or a leather jacket that is made of large pieces of leather, you know that the leather is of a high quality because they can cut it without having any flaws anywhere. So the one, this is it in the fuchsia nuvolato patent leather, and she is lined in a violet or bright, oh, you probably can't see it. It's a bright purple lining on the inside. And you can see that the one can be held over the shoulder like so. And to compare it to the Tara, when I did shows and I showed one, everybody said, boy, I'd love to wear it as a crossbody. But I never saw this bag as being worn as a crossbody. So that's why the Tara was born. I just miniaturized the pattern, changed it a little bit, and added the crossbody strap to it, which gives you that versatility. And again, a lot of people have asked, what can you put in one versus a Tara? And I brought a very old iPad. This iPad here measures seven and a quarter inches by nine and a quarter inches. And you can see that she fits perfectly into one and you can zip her right up. And the one has an interior button pocket, just like the Tara does. She's a little too small to carry a, a computer. That would be the Katya. That could be a computer case. But I just wanted to show you these two pieces together. And some of the new leathers that I've been bringing out or that I'm starting with this spring are the Safiano leathers. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it very clearly, but the Safiano leather is a calfskin leather with a textured emboss on it. And what that does is it makes the leather very rugged, very um, structured in the piece, in the construction of it, but it also makes it scratch proof and water resistant. So if you're tough on your bags like I am, Safiano leather is probably an ideal leather to go with. And I have it in a few different colors. I did the one in the sky blue with a lilac interior. And again, I'll bring the bag up close. So I'm hoping you can see some of the texture of the Safiano emboss on there. And then also, here we go. Also in a bright fuchsia, which is perfect for spring. This is one of the colors of spring. If you've uh, seen any of the colors this spring, they're all bright yellows, oranges, fuchsias, and violets. So just like a lot of these bags here. Voila. And then one of the newer pieces in the collection that I debuted at the last art show is the Grace. It's a vertical tote with two pockets, right here and here. Perfect size to just slip your iPhone in. And then a perfect size to take an eyeglass case holder and just pop it right in there. So all of your essentials are easily accessible for you. It has a magnetic closure and it also has an interior pocket as well. This bag here is deep enough to carry a laptop vertically. And then what else is new and exciting? The Jody. The Jody's always been, this has been one of my first versatile pieces. It's a great bucket bag. Everybody loves it. The size is perfect. It's small, but it actually fits so much in it. And the beauty of it is it gives you that versatility to just slide the strap and wear it as a crossbody bag. So again, it gives you hands-free control. You're able to walk around in your purse is securely on your body. So I always try to build my bags with versatility in them so they conform to you instead of you having to conform to the bag. And so this is the Jody. And then I don't wanna say last but not least, because I hope to get to one more item. But the one thing that everybody has been loving, which is just so simple and fun, are the bracelets. They're leather and metal bracelets. I'm wearing all three here now. And I'll just run through them very quickly. They're just quick and easy, snap on, snap off. The first one is the Ophelia. It's a bangle bracelet made of metal and vegetable tanned leather. 
named after my grandmother, Nonno Ophelia. And you just unhook it, slide it right on, whoops, and then clasp it right down there. To take it off, it's like snapping your fingers. You just put your finger on either side of the clasp and just pinch. And this one comes in nickel, rose gold, and yellow gold finishings. The one everybody has been loving is the spaghetti. So simple, so easy. It just wraps right off and coils right back on. And the magnetic closure just jumps right on. And this is available in a nickel and a yellow gold. And then for the men in the room, they always wanted a little bracelet. So a simple eight strand leather braided bracelet, again with the magnetic closure. So simple, so easy. And they can be worn with any Angela? fine jewelry. Mm -hmm. We do have a couple questions that came in the chat. We only have about a minute left. So I wanted to try to get to show, um, there was a question about this bag that I think is on your right, if I'm looking at it correctly with the big, the, yep, yep, that bag right there. The um, what is that? The Barbara is a hobo bag. Simple, easy to Wonderful. wear hobo bag. It has an adjustable strap. The interior is suede lined and a sand color and it comes with an interior pocket. Mm -hmm. And the material on the outside is a calf suede with a gold camouflage print fused onto it. So you can see the, uh, the metallic finish on it. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm glad you were able to show it to us. Um, there were a couple questions also about your eyeglass holder asking if you do make those. And I know that the answer is yes, but we are um, out of time. So maybe in the after party, we could look at it more closely because um, yeah, so just have those on hand because I know two different people wanted to see, wanted to know if you made those. So that's great. Thank um, you. Well, thank you so much, Angela. Um, and we look forward to hearing a little bit more from you in a bit. Um, we are going to go to Ariel of Ariel Brackett Jewelry. Hi, Hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm Ariel Brackett and I live in Portland, Oregon. And uh, the line of work I have with me today is uh, created through a technique called cuddlebone casting. And that's what this is is a cuttlefish bone. Um, I carve into the bone and it creates this type of texture. Um, you can see it kind of has like a wave pattern. And then um, I drill into it and create um, a more lace-like pattern. And then once I am happy with the shape, then um, I have them mold and cast so that I can make uh, a repetitive pattern. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the best sellers. So my earrings are often uh, the best seller and I have a lot of different styles. Um, but I'm going to show you the most common ones. So this is the new um, Cuddlebone Stud. It's a really little guy. It's about that size. And that one's not yet on the website, and neither is this one. But if you're interested, just email me. or contact me through my website. I really like how this one sits on the ear too because of the shape. It kind of goes up the ear lobe. Here is the small coral uh, stud. And this is offered um, in silver and bronze and oxidized silver, but this is what the bronze looks like. Here's the medium. And then those of you that really like big earrings like me, this is the one for you. 
this is the bronze in uh, the large coral earrings. This line of jewelry is inspired by um, coral and also um, like um, I imagine different like natural objects like pods. So then there's different more three-dimensional forms like this ring that I'm wearing. Um, this is a brooch. Uh, this is one of my larger brooches, but I've been starting to play with a little bit more color in my work. So this is powder coated in Sartreuse. And um, I've been using a powder coating or a, an enameling technique called sifting, but I've been using it with powder coating. And so you can see it kind of has the different fade. So here's the like citrine, or sorry, the Sartreuse. Um, the darker blue and the seafoam green. And here's another brooch um, with the seafoam green in the bottom and the darker blue on top. When these ones are mixed, for some reason, the seafoam kind of turns to a lighter blue. Um, and each brooch, comes with this locking mechanism. And so it's a spring. And so it locks into place. So you don't have to worry about it getting lost. And here is another variation with the, the deep uh, blue and then the uh, chartreuse on the bottom. And um, here is one of my newest forms. This comes in a necklace as well as a brooch, but this is a pod. And you can see, hopefully you can see some of that texture, that cuddle bone texture and the three dimensionality. And so this is the um, sterling silver. And this is what it looks like ox oxidized. And then I've been playing with um, some different hoop shapes in a new line. These are not yet on the website either. This is sterling silver. They'll come in bronze and then a variety of powder coated colors as well. Ariel. Yeah. I don't want to break your flow, but we now have two different people asking about the rings on your fingers. So could you tell us about the rings on your fingers? Sure. So this one is a inspired by a made up pod. Oh, wow. Um, so you can see it's three dimensional here. Let's see. Three dimensional. But as you move it, you can see different shapes in it and this is oxidized silver on the top and you can see it has a rounded band so it's really comfortable and then the other one i'm wearing is this piece here i think it might have been easier to see on my actual i was gonna finger. say i think on your fingers <laughs> yeah there you go so you can have a lot like i love statement rings Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're really uncomfortable. So I construct my pieces so that it has a really comfortable band on the side. Like I have full movement from my hand. Those are gorgeous. Thanks. Thank and, and you. Also, is, is the new work on your site? Someone just asked me that. Um, unfortunately, it's not yet, but it should be soon. <laughs> okay, great. And so but how do you people... have... Yeah, go ahead. If you have any interest and want to snap or um, snag some of these pieces beforehand, uh, please just email me through my website and I can set up a one-on-one um, -on -one Zoom with you or um, do email with you to figure out, you know, what you would like. That's fantastic. Um, so were there a couple more pieces you wanted to show us? We yeah, have there... just a little bit of time. Yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah there are a few more. 
So I wanted to show you for those of you that are hoops people, which I definitely am. Um, I also, I forgot to show these at the last art party uh, this morning or this afternoon, early afternoon. But these ones are also a larger one. And then the ones that I'm wearing are the ones I showed you earlier. And this is what they look like in the faded sea foam and blue. Oh, that's so fun. That's um, so and quiet. I have some orange, some red, and some uh, pink coral coming in the mail and should arrive Monday. So that will also be an option. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ariel. It was so great seeing even new work from uh, the earlier party. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank that, you that was great thank you so um we are going to now go to our last artist of the night um kathleen tiznakis and i did a quick wardrobe change kathleen for for you so i'd have my ecologic on my neck yes, <laughs> are. well good i I, I think I'll talk about those first then. Um, welcome everybody to the Ecologic Studio. I am a recycling artist and I specialize in recycling old sweaters and transforming them into fabric and then hand cutting and collaging into the pieces that you see here. Um, spring is absolutely one of my favorite times to wear my cashmere. And I know a lot of people think of cashmere as only being a winter item, but truthfully, I consider it a three season material. Uh, as we're getting into this like warmer weather, but it's still cool and you never know when the chill is coming. Um, having a beautiful piece of cashmere um, allows you to be super comfortable and you can leave those coats in the closet. So um, I'm all about having little pieces of cashmere to get me through the spring, to get me through um, being a little chilly in the house when I'm working on the computer or things like that. When I'm doing something like that, I, I or going on a walk, I really look to my little cuffs that I do here. And and this is um, different than the mittens that you may know me for. Uh, this is a lighter weight cashmere, so it's perfect for this time of year. I always suggest that people just wear them on their wrists. You never have to lose them that way. And having a bit of cashmere um, on your pulse points, on your um, wrist or neck, it actually helps stabilize your body temperature. So these can really get you out of a bind and they're absolutely fabulous to just having a bag. Um, what Sam is wearing is a really fun piece. This is my twist scarf and I've done many different versions of them and what I love about the twist scarf is that it can be worn in so many ways it is just completely utilitarian I know a lot of people have enjoyed them this year because they have the warmth of a cashmere a double layer cashmere and they didn't have to be so wrapped up in their traditional scarves um, and this guy really really works even though it's tiny so um, some of them I put color accents that you you know see in these pieces other ones I do completely plain so when you go to the website you'll see lots of choices but you see I can wear that piece either way if I want it just to be neutral I'll wear it that way if I want a little pizzazz I can throw it to the side this piece is also really fantastic as a headband and again, these pieces you just have to play with. It, it's um, when I first designed them, I didn't. I did it for a customer, and I didn't really understand the functionality of it. And it literally took me a year before I fell in love and really started to make them. So um, it's one of those things as artists, you know, we listen and then we go oh, wait a minute, you're so right. I'm so thankful that you made me do this or at least asked me to do this. So um, these have been fantastic. I know uh, a dear friend, she actually wears them up like this, with like a little double knot. And I gotta say, oh my God, it's like adorable. So you find your style in my work and that's what it's all about. So um, I'll, I'll move on to some of the garments. 
Um, so I'm really excited to be a part of the Smithsonian Craft Optimism Show coming up. So I actually um, did some of my special dresses for this. And if you've never had the opportunity to wear a cashmere dress, it's, it's that same thing. Cashmere is very much like a hug and it um, helps you stabilize your body temperature. So being out in an early evening outside in one of these cashmeres is such a pleasure. You kind of feel like you're in pajamas because you're so comfy, but you look gorgeous. And, and that's what my work is all about. My other favorite sweater for spring is the one that I'm wearing. It is the pepper design. And um, you can see the back detail here. Uh, this is really fantastic for the type of weather we're having right now. And it can also be layered up underneath with like a turtleneck and it happens to be great with a collared shirt. Uh, I like to tell people a little tip on how to layer things when you're layering. If you're gonna wear a collared button down shirt, you don't want those buttons to show through. So um, just throw a little tank top on top and it's gonna keep everything smooth and clean and look fantastic for you. Um, I also wear my hats in the spring because you lose a lot of heat from your head. So you can be in a t-shirt and have a hat in your bag, a scarf, a pair of mittens. You pop this on and uh, it makes a world of difference. So. For me, cashmere is three seasons. I cannot leave home without it. And I hope you will discover some of our cashmere too. <laughs> do you have questions for me, Sam? Of course I do. Um, so one of the questions is from Megan, which I think is hilarious. And she sees you like three times a day, but I think it's a great question. Do you have any, um, do you have any three quarter length sleeves? Any, any sweaters with three quarter length sleeves? Oh my gosh, yes, absolutely I do. You know, one of my other favorite sweaters, and this is the Veronica sweater. It's, a, it's also kind of like a little bit of a jacket, but I have to tell you, I love this sleeve. I have done this sleeve uh, in such a beautiful way, or at least I think so. You can wear it long, but it folds up to three quarters and it's super cute. And I see if I can I can show you that. It's really cute, three quarters. So yes, and let's say that you love one of my traditional sweaters, like my V-necks, and this is another great one for spring. I said, leave the jacket at home and just throw one of these on. But you can always ask me to just make this three quarters and I will just finish it off for you three quarters, literally just lifting that color out or maybe keeping this accent and just do a little piping here and give you a three quarter. Oh my gosh, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> and I, I have to say, I absolutely agree with you that cashmere is perfect for spring. And I don't think it's just up here in Vermont where spring is still quite chilly, but it's so great to be able to ditch your jacket, leave your jacket at home because you've got your cashmere layer on. It's just, yeah. it's perfect. Um, right. Yeah. To ask you, I did, uh, this came up before, but um, do you and or Charlie wear, wear your cashmere all year round? Yes. Yes, we yeah. do. There, there's only one type of weather that we leave it at home mm -hmm. and that's humidity, mm -hmm. you know? So I will wear it all the way up into 80, 80 degrees mm -hmm. without a problem. Or sometimes on an 80 degree day, I will have my cashmere with me for when the sun goes down. Um, but if it is humid, because wool will absorb three times its weight in water, uh, it just doesn't feel good when you wear it in a humid climate. Right, okay. Um, and yeah, and what you have on right now is perfect for spring, summer, everything, I would think. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am just looking because it looks like Pam answered a question for you, but oh, do you have any skirts? So oh. we have only a few seconds, but do you have a skirt you can show us? <laughs> because they're so awesome. Skirts right now. And I, I'm even like wearing, let's see, I wish you could see my green skirt. Oh, yes, you can. Oh, my gosh. With that I orange. I love it. Oh, Kathleen, thank you so much. Your colors are so dreamy and I always love listening to you. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> and thanks to all of the artists who came today. Um, we loved hearing all of your stories, seeing your new work. Like I said before, we actually even got to see new work from 2.30 to 5.30, it's so exciting. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a, the art parties are a living, breathing thing. And so there's always variety. Um, and we wanna thank everyone who came um, to see these presentations, to be a part of it, to interact with us. Um, before we draw the raffle prize next, um, I just wanted to let you know um, how much we all really do appreciate you. We are why, you are why we make our work and you are why we continue to evolve and we continue to create. Um, and just interacting with you here, interacting with you in person as we used to do, and having our, um, even the private Zooms and FaceTimes are really such an important part of our creative process. It inspires us to continue our work. So we really do appreciate that. Um, and we encourage you to, if you see, um, if you saw artists that you liked today, to go visit them, visit their websites, um, follow them on social media, tell your friends about it about them, tell your friends about us, about Art Party Central. Um, we encourage you to visit artpartycentral.org to see what the um, next parties are and, and to visit the websites of all of our artists. We do have a page that just devoted to um, links to all of our artists. So we encourage you to continually sort of check that out. Um, so, I won't make you wait any longer. We are going to celebrate a little bit here. So if anybody wants to, if you guys wanna take uh, unmute yourselves so that you can join us in um, cheering people on, I am going to announce the winners of the six different raffle prizes. Um, and also I just ask that anyone who is a winner, if you wouldn't mind, it would be fabulous if you would put your email in the chat. Um, you can also private message Charlie um, in admin um, if you don't want to put it in the public chat, which is understandable. Um, so without further ado, I will go to my page where I wrote down the winners. Um, so for Megan Patrice Riley Jewelry, we have Rosalind Ginger. Congratulations, Rosalind. Yay, Rosalind. Yay. 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 For Christine Evans, we have Emily Batista. Woo! That's Yay. cool. Yay. Yay. Um, for Merzada, we have Susie Ng. Yay. Yay. Congratulations. Bottega Flaviani, Rika Woolman. Yay, Rika. Yay. Congratulations. Ariel Brackett Jewelry. I'm sorry? Um. I didn't quite catch that. For Ariel Brackett Jewelry, we have Lori Gibson. Yay! Lori. And for wow. Echo, Echo Logic, we have Susan Finkel. Yay! Yes. Yay. Oh. yes. Congratulations to Yay. all the winners. Thank you. I'm, I'm what, on, what, I'm not what, are we, what did we win? This is my first time winning anything. Oh, so who just That's said that? Because I, I can't see it. Susie Ng. Oh, so Susie, you won a $50 gift certificate <gasps> to Merzada. No way. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. We're trying to find her on screen. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I see her now. Do you see her? Yeah, she's yeah. looking for oh, you. I'm, excited. I'm so excited that you're I'm excited. So excited. Who, I'm, I'm losing track of the names. Uh, Merzada is who? Um, <laughs> Show yeah. a piece. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I guess you'll email me and I'll pick something yes. out or something. So the way this is going to work, I'll just tell everybody at once. The way it works is we will be oh, sending wait. emails to each of the winners with the, the code for the $50 gift Lori certificate. What you but like. also, um, we, of course, as we always say, we want everyone to go home feeling like a winner because, of course, okay, we all are. Okay. And so we're going to... Um, say Rick loves Ariel. Are you writer? Writer, tell her. Um, because she wasn't sure. So we're going to send um, send you all home with a coupon code of 10% off all the artists' websites, as well as mine. So the six artists um, and uh, swanandstone.com. Um, and the coupon code for today's party is 43ARTPARTY. So 43-A-R-T-P-A-R-T-Y. Um, and just so you all know, we're going to send emails out to all of you, everyone who registered for this event, everyone who came today, um, with all the websites of each of the artists, emails, and this coupon code. So feel free to uh, jot down your notes now. 
about it because you will get an email follow up in just a little bit so that you can go to each of the, the artist websites, do a little retail therapy, buy some Mother's Day gifts maybe, um, <laughs> or happy spring gifts. Really, the sky's the limit, quite honestly. Um, you've got uh, seven different websites now to uh, fulfill your every dream. Um, so I also wanted to let you know that we next week we have two more art parties um with new and returning artists our art parties are going to be on thursday and on saturday of next week um again artpartycentral.org is where um you know again if you're not writing all this down this is a lot to take in so next week we will have nfp new form perspective suzanne schwartz jewelry b felt griffith evans swan and stone millinery um ecologic Nancy Marlin Jewelry, Sherwood Forest Design, Shepherd's Run Jewelry, Posh Felt, and Steel Pony. So that's in the two different parties. So you can RSVP at artpartycentral.org. Um, and then also on April 9th, we're going to be offering our workshop on presenting yourself virtually. We did this before. It was it was um, we had a blast. It was a great workshop. We had a good turnout. Um, so we thought we'd offer it again. It's open to everyone and we'll focus on looking your virtual best and learning how to be confident and comfortable on video. Um, so we'll be sending all of you an email. We'll be sending the whole list an email um, with the Eventbrite, Eventbrite sign up link. Um, the cost for the workshop is $25. So again, I wanna thank my awesome co-host, Charlie Tiznakis for, um, for keeping everything going smoothly, spotlighting people when they needed to be, you know, managing people who were coming in, putting the links in the chat. All of that was done by Charlie. And um, thanks, Charlie. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. It's a behind the scenes kind of um, thank you. Um, so I'm, I think I can speak for all the artists when we say thank you so much. You guys were all awesome. And we know you're busy. So if you, um, would like to stick around and hang out with everyone and chat for a bit. We'll take a couple more questions. Um, if you need to go, nobody's gonna be offended. Um, you are free to leave. Um, we do have a couple of questions that um, were not answered in the chat that I can get to, but also if anyone has anything, you are welcome to either pop it in the chat now or unmute yourself, or I will try to um, answer some of the things that were not quite answered. Um, crickets. Angela, let's go to you. Because <laughs> we know that first of all, we need to see your eyeglass case because I sort of cut it off and I hate to do that. Um, so let's see your eyeglass case. And, um, and um, also after that, see the smaller purse on the bottom shelf. So let's, let's see your eyeglass case since we know that one and then we'll kind of figure out what what that purse is that we're talking about sure so thank you to whoever asked about the eyeglass case i actually make two different eyeglass cases one is a larger one for sunglasses or larger frame glasses and one is a smaller one for readers or very small frames so each one does regardless of design they're all suede lined in the back they have a snap closure and it's as simple as taking your glasses out slipping the frames in, snapping the button, and folding the arms down. Simple, thin, and minimalist design. Same thing here, I have the eyeglasses already in. You just open it right up, snaps open, and the eyeglasses come out. And then, uh, and so each one, this is an eyeglass case. This is called the readers mm -hmm. on, uh, on the website. Um, and then you were mentioning a small bag down at the yeah. bottom. Do you know what color would it? It looks like there's two in both forward. All right. I'll bring them all down. So again, the purple, oops, the purple and the snakeskin are both the Tribeca. Oh, got it. Okay. These are both the Tribeca. One has a strap already, whoops, already uh, attached onto it. Mm -hmm. And then this tiny one is the Emily, is a small wallet case. And 
it's a card holder, business card holder, or I used to carry my wallet, my, uh, you know, money, credit card, driver's license, it all fits in here. And the leathers I use are soft enough that they, they begin to stretch and grow with you as you use them more and more. And that is ridiculously adorable. I love it so mm -hmm. much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Angela. Yeah, um, thank you. And then another thing was, um, Danielle, um, can you tell us, can you explain what MICA is? Um, and then also, I was hoping you had a couple more of those um, incredible diamond slice pieces. I don't know about uh, MICA. Okay. First, uh, MICA is a rock. It's a silicate rock, a sheet silicate is its mineral family. And that's because it, I saw the question, so I went and got a rock. Yeah. Um, so it comes in chunks, but each chunk can be split into layers that are really thin. Kind of the way that slate, if you have a slate path, maybe in the winter, it'll, it, by spring, like you'll see flakes of it, like flake off. There are two sort of ways Micah's mine in flakes or in sheets. And we use rocks that are split, easy to split in sheets, or we'll even get thick sheets and then slice them. And then we use a micrometer to get the sheets exactly the right width or uh, thickness each. And then we score the pattern that we want and actually cut it with scissors. Also kind of plebeian sounding, but it's pretty cool that that's how you can cut a rock. Uh, we also use fancy tools and do other exciting things, but I think sometimes unlearning is a great part of the process. So that's that part. Um, diamond slices, did I, I show these big ones, right? You showed, yes, you did. So I think that probably means somebody is interested in a diamond slice necklace. So while I walk over to that, I just wanna also, um, you had mentioned Mother's Day. Uh -huh. This is a peony seed. Oops. <laughs> Inside my sleeve is a peony seed. This is a single seed from a peony flower. And it's cast in sterling. It runs freely on this chain. It's $100, um, which comes with like a really nice wooden box. And it's a really beautiful thing. And you have 10% off. And so it's an awesome Mother's Day gift. You don't have to think much harder than that one. Oh, this is great. a diamond sleigh. So this is an extremely oh, neat. thin chain. Sorry, I'll try to do this as quickly as possible. This is the only one in stock. Um, I just removed that in stock notice on our site, if you saw that earlier. This is an ex black explosion in the inside. These are very subtle necklaces. They're best sellers for me for sure. Uh, there are a few people on the call that have them and they're just these like awesome. Oh, wow. It's like flashes of light on your skin. They're very sexy. They're very subtle. They often become jewelry uniforms for people. They don't take them off. Wow. Uh, 14 karat gold. Oh, I'm so glad you showed us that. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you you <laughs> packed a lot in. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and then there was a, a question for Christine. Um, so Christine Evans. Um, yeah. So can, I know you did talk about um, your work being outside. Um, mm -hmm. So can your pieces handle rain and humidity as well? Yes, yes. You know, I, I think for the most part they can, as long as there's not a wooden base attached to it. Mm -hmm. And all of my sculptures, because they can be detached from the wooden base easily. Um, also, I haven't tested the gold leaf that's on the, the some of the masks, mm -hmm. but I have seen gold leaf on buildings and it's yeah. real gold, you know? So I think, I think it could handle it, probably, mm -hmm. <laughs> is my guess. I just haven't tested it. Mm -hmm. The clay itself can handle humidity just fine. Right, got it. And you're yes. actually in New Mexico, right? Yes. Yeah. So, not, a lot, not a lot of rain here. <laughs> right. You're you're less able to test test it yourself, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah. <Right. laughs> well, thank you. Um, thank you. And let's see. Did anybody? Does anybody else have any questions? I don't want to take over too much. Um. So, Megan. Um, can you show us some of your go-to earring classics? Can you show oh. us some of your earrings, please? Yes, actually, because I'm like this. Yes, I've been focusing a lot on like crazy big pieces, but we do do a lot. I was thinking about Mother's Day. We do do a lot of really classic things. Mm -hmm. Classic for me, it's still very contemporary. But one of the things that's kind of like my gateway piece is this 
grad circle earring and I do it now in all these different sizes. And this is on a hook. Is it and hard to it, take off of there? Yeah, because it's yeah, kind of take hard it off to see yeah. with the movement. Absolutely. Oh, there you go. Yep. This is, it's just a simple earring. This is one of the first designs I ever created and it got me to understand how to fabricate mm -hmm. and fabricate really cleanly with my technique. This is with a gun metal and then yellow gold. It's like a very soft two-tone. This is all movement. This is all the findings that we create in-house too. So I kind of engineer them to have that little tube there. So everything moves back and forth, but doesn't flip around. So when you wear it, it has all that movement. Uh, it's just, it's that, lovely. Is that the same earring that Luca has? No, this one oh. is on a hook. Oh, Luca okay. Has, oh, his is a me, post. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. We do the little hooks, but I do another version of this with gemstones. This okay. is an all no gemstone version. Luca has okay. a special one that I made and we do them with little gemstones of um, tourmaline, spinels. These are like great, this, this with a white pearl instead of the, the navy blue spinel here is a wonderful like this is floating there, but that's actually a little tube, oh, there. special tube post to match the tube hook. Oh my. And that has that little movement as well. Even though it's a it's a post, there's gonna be movement. So everything I do has that movement. So I just want everyone to know that my 17 year old got his ears pierced to wear his NPR and he has not taken them off yet, like since. So the as most soon flattering. as they healed, put his NPR earrings in and they have not left his body. It's very <laughs> flattering. And I love that. I, I love that. I love when people are, it, it feels becomes part of them. And I do such, this one earring, that one I showed you on the little hook, that comes in 10 colors. So you can get something that's really feels like the right color for you or the mm -hmm. right piece for you, the right gemstone. Right. Um, Paula had just asked, yes. this is a new piece. <laughs> I, this I just posted, this is a, some new Easter eggs. <laughs> like up on the website I could not help it up on the website that I post I, I posted special for Art Party Central and this is one of the special pieces I posted this is one of those big cable pieces and you can it's all separate you can wear it all these different ways you can break it apart wear one interlock them make it into a little crazier piece so awesome thank, thank you. you that's you, a Megan. max of thank you so much you guys thanks so much so Ariel, um, I yes. wanted to ask you before, and didn't, we didn't quite get to it. Um, in the chat, while you were presenting, especially while you were talking about your earrings, um, there was conversation about, oh, they're like little wings. Um, and I think actually Megan said like lichen wings. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you, what is your, what, what are you inspired by? What's your inspiration there? So I spent a lot of time outside and I grew up spending a lot of time outside. And so um, I really like incorporating like the imagination uh, part of my way of thinking with things I see in nature. So I'm not trying to replicate it, but I'm trying to make it look like something you would find in nature. Um, and so yeah, it, I think that's part of why this mm -hmm. one, oh, this piece ended up kind of looking, I mean, it does have that lichen color, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, most of my designs are very inspired by organic material. I do have, I also wanted to show you guys, I realized I didn't show you guys any of these, but here are a few of the other rings Those are awesome. and you can see the difference too. So like the bronze, the um, oxidized sterling silver, and then uh, the chartreuse again in the powder coat. And then here's kind of a more simple, like, I don't know, design that's a little less organic. Mm. Um, but, but they anyway, still look like they'd be really comfortable, right? Yeah. So they're, it's that same thing where they may yeah. be pretty big, but that back end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you can see it on. Sorry, it's so awkward to try to get you guys to be able to see it. Oh, I know. Um, 
but <laughs> someone's also asking someone's also asking to see the powder coated ring up close oh this one's so fun it's very sculptural and i only have one of these oh cool um and then oh that's like a little butterfly yeah, so it kind of changes shape depending on where you're looking at it. Also, the really cool thing about this collection is if you're in the light, all the shadows. So like you'll get really cool shadows on your skin. And anyway, that's what it looks like. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. asking. You really held out on us, you know. There, that was a lot of great. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I totally forgot last time. <laughs> I actually do that to remember. Time. I do that all the time. I I totally understand, but really, that was a beautiful collection of pieces. Awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I loved seeing your work. <laughs> Thanks. So, Kathleen, can we go back to Kathleen? Yeah. Yeah. Who just said yeah? Oh, is that you, Kathleen, saying yeah? yeah. <laughs> You're just so darn cute. Um. So, um, did you? Um. Well, first, I. Is there anything else you wanted to show us that we didn't get to? Let me just ask you that before I ask you an act, a question that was written down. I wanted to show you a neutral because you know uh, this. This is a really special piece. You know, some. Oh. I'm at the mercy of the fabric that comes through. And, and sometimes I'm lucky enough to find things with some very interesting intersections. And um, so this is a great example of a neutral on which I've also been able to use some stripes. So if you, if you want something more muted like that, or even something more neutral like greens, I do it all. So feel free to reach out and make an appointment, especially if you don't know what size you are. And, um, and if you do need tips on cleaning cashmere, how to care for cashmere, go to the website. Uh, there is a wonderful section on resource and um, what is this? I think resources and something else. I've forgotten the title, but anyway, go there. It's got all kinds of answers to questions that you might have. Um, and it helps you care for our work. I love so much that you put that up there. And I have to tell you the, I think maybe the best question just came in from Liz Austin and um, we should figure out how to all of us jointly answer it. Because the question is, do the artists do joint consultations if you want to coordinate one artist with another? Yeah, that's what an idea. Yes. Yeah, made my head explode. <laughs> right? Because all we do, like if, imagine, so if we had, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try a little something. So we have, okay, so you're gonna coordinate jewelry with your oh, the ecologic clothing <laughs> oh and megan's that wearing I'm wearing so oh, right, yeah, yeah. what she's wearing yeah. but, but you don't keep it to two perhaps i want a sweater from kathleen a hat from you and a necklace and or earrings from from megan you know right and, right. and maybe i want to you know expand it even more so. and you want like a cuff like yeah. a Wonder Woman cup. Oh, a Wonder Woman, <laughs> right? I need and a Wonder thank Woman you, cup. Thank you, because I noticed I was not invited to the party. Right, You're no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm experimenting because I don't know like how many, how many do we, how many can we put in here, right? I, mean, I, mean, we're, I think we are here, right? And that's a great function of the after party is like you've got yeah. this capture of this, this moment where. Um, but I think also it is absolutely something that like would be super fun to do. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I have actually done that for a customer. They bought um, a scarf from Fratelli and Lockwood, and then they wanted the coordinating hat and mittens. And so they just had all those pieces. And then I went and hunted and brought a whole collection in, and we literally just held them up. And it yeah. was great. But yes, having all the artists would be really cool. Yeah. So I just put all the wearable. Because <laughs> of course, I mean, of course you could... So with you know your sculpture because <laughs> why wouldn't you but you yes life. I think that that is a wonderful um idea and it it could be a fun thing to yeah and Paula is saying a fashion show like I mean you some of you have probably noticed that we do wear each other's work a lot yeah <laughs> Megan has a fascinator on 
I've been trying to, I mean, I have my NPR earrings on, but I've been trying to go back and forth with my, my little neck scarf and my, um, and my NPR, you know, jewelry. Yeah. Um, but yes. So I, I think it's, it's a fantastic or. idea. <laughs> What'd you say? I think it's not either or on those two pieces. It's and. And. Well, yeah. that's what I did initially. And Kathleen's <laughs> like, oh yeah, that looks great. I had the necklace and then I had yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> that, that's so much fun but what a great question Liz I yeah. love that. and and we will have to figure out how to do that sometime and you can see behind Charlie I, I do have a stage that we could do fashion shows but I, I have well actually I'm in an old church so it was the altar <laughs> but I haven't gotten potato potato I say <laughs> <laughs> that's it so, well, on that note, <laughs> um, thank you everyone for coming. And unless there's um, anything, any last thing, I think we're, I think we're good to go. We're ending on a high note. So happy Saturday, everyone. And for your email. Yeah.